Hi, you're watching a mildly interesting guy, yours truly, doing mildly interesting things. Today, a review of the Pittsburgh 42-inch off-road farm jack. This is one of the products which you can find at Harbor Freight, your local very discounted hardware and tool and everything store. Candy store, as I like to call it. And I bought this yesterday. Cost a grand total of just under $50. I had a $5 discount. And so for a total of $45. This is costing less than half of the comparable products on the market. There's a pro company called High Lift, which you can purchase products from Amazon. And of course, Tractor Supply has their own stuff. This I bought from Harbor Freight. Bought it yesterday, tried it today, and I'm gonna return it today. Reason I'm returning it, it does not work. It'll go up just fine. Coming down is really sketchy. Under my own weight, it'll go up and come down just fine. No problems at all. I weigh 230 pounds or so, and I know I need to lose weight, but I'm nowhere near the 7,000 pound limit that this thing is supposed to be able to lift. So I'm glad it does work for light loads. However, I'm trying to lift things that I cannot lift, and that means things that are heavier than me, namely my tractor and the three-point um, backhoe attachment that I have there, kind of blending into the leaves with the rust color. When I try lifting that thing, it goes up okay. But what it doesn't do is go back down. And for that reason, it gets a big thumbs down and I will be returning it and looking into other products on the market. A Little bit about the fit and finish. It is cast iron. I believe it's cast iron or not cast steel. It seems to be a little rough as all Harbor Freight equipment is. You can see a little bit of pitting there and that's all in the final finish. Now, under a lot of, oh, that's dust, not pitting. Well, there's some pitting there, even, even after removing the dust. Under most circumstances, Harbor Freight stuff is good enough. I do not use their jack stands, and I knew I was taking a gamble on this, which is why I was t planning to test it extensively. Unfortunately, it didn't make it through the, first of, the second of my tests. The first one was lifting me. Actually, that was a third test. The, the first test was going up and down in the store under no load. The second test was lifting me when I got out of the box here at home. And the third test was trying to lift my backhoe piece. What happens when it goes up? Under no load, it goes up and coming down in the store, it didn't have a problem. This morning, it didn't have a problem. And then on the third try, it did have a problem where it just plain dropped all the way down. Coming up okay, coming down, no. Both of these pins got stuck out and dropped. Now, that is a common problem with farm jacks. That's why if you read the instructions online, you'll see it written, these are dangerous. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't use them. Thankfully, I like to think that I do know what I'm doing. There we go, that I do know what I am doing. And I know that I can fix that issue with lubrication. And I could put some grease on here and fix that. However, uh, that, that would work fine for these pins because they're smooth and the holes they're in are maybe a little rough. That'll be okay. What isn't okay is the rest of the construction here. This is the guts of the entire operation, this silver bracket here. It's a very roughly cast, sand cast piece. I'm not sure what type of metal it is. I'm going to guess it's just plain cast iron. It gets pretty thin down here. And if you look at the profile, you can see this works very similarly to other farm jacks. We sit on the tailgate, tip everything backwards. As you lift the arm or push the arm down, it will lift up the bottom bracket and carry this piece, th this uh, bracket in question up, lifting up one of the, pushing one of the pins out of the hole and letting the other pin settle into the hole and do that in turn on each stroke. That's how it works. Ingenious, simple. I like it. Uh, not too much that can go wrong with that. The only major issue you'll have is lubrication. And here, with this very rough part, catching on the very rough finish of the slides that it's sliding on, there is too much friction for it to operate properly. 
So on the upstroke, it works okay. On the downstroke, this piece does not fall down as it should, and it doesn't move as it should. It gets caught, and as a result, this doesn't work. Sometimes the two pins are caught out, and the whole thing slides down. It only happened to me on low load, and on my own load once, I think. I don't remember anymore. However, under full load, or not even full load, I lifted about, you know, say 500 pounds with it, maybe maybe closer to 1,000 pounds with it, and it went up and up and up and up and up, and then I flipped this lever, so this lever goes up for up, and then I push the lever down for down, and it wouldn't go back down. It would either stay in place or continue to try to go up, and the reason being that this little silver thing here wasn't falling down properly. Now, could I fix that? Yes. I could put some grease there and it'll work for a bit, for a little bit of time. I could grease up the whole thing and it'll work okay for a while. Alternatively, I could uh, take this piece off, grind it down smooth, grind off the bosses that it's riding on smooth, and make sure everything's nice and smooth, and then lubricate it and it'll work even better. Now, the issue with the first scenario, not grinding, just greasing, is that because the surfaces are so rough, any sand or grit that gets in there is going to cause it to bind and not work. So I really do need to take it off and grind it. The issue with the second one is there's not much meat here. That's about a quarter of an inch thick, and that quarter of an inch thick is critical for, mission critical for this part to function. So I don't really want to grind it thinner than it is already, and I don't trust it very much on second reflection. Could I lubricate it nicely and get it to work today? Yes, I could. Can I guarantee that it'll stay clean and lubricated in the field, lifting my tractor in the dirt? No, I cannot. And therefore, I'm going to return this and get something that's better quality, better made, and has probably more options and features on it as well. So this is called a Pittsburgh High Lift Farm Jack with a 7,000 pound capacity. There is a company in Ohio, I believe, that makes these farm jacks called High Lift. The company's name is High Lift. They have a pretty good following online they, and pretty good reviews. Seems to be the right company to go for. And their 42 inch jack is not much more expensive, maybe just about double the price. But given that it should work just fine, uh, that might be the right thing to do. However, I think what I'm going to do is buy one from Tractor Supply because for a safety critical item, I want to have a local vendor that I can talk to. And I know Tractor Supply isn't the best local vendor, but it's a little bit better than Amazon. Now, if I'm not satisfied with the quality from Tractor Supply, I will be returning that as well and going back to Amazon. But for now, this is a review of the Pittsburgh Farm Jack. Do not buy. Not very good. If you do buy, plan to replace all those thingy-majigs down there and clean them all up and do a lot of rework before actually using it. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. And to all the veterans out there, I hope you have a peaceful Veterans Day. Thank you.